all words. That's our word brought to you by Discord and Bitcoin. This will be the last time, I think. I got my H2. I haven't set it up yet. Which, by the way, uh, I have one more thing to plug. Freedombed.walberts.com uh, Ben Stone, who uh, is a fantastic, awesome person. I, his book, I completely disavow. Completely disavow. I don't know. Nothing to do with that. But go buy a copy just to be sure. Um, completely disavow. I guess he's starting an app with Jim Davidson, and they're going to um, basically make like a like a libertarian B and B uh, Airbnb uh, app, which sounds absolutely amazing. They're doing a nice. GoFundMe campaign. Uh, ten out of ten, one hundred emoji. I don't know what that really means, but if that's good, then Jim? I definitely mean that. And I'm What's here with Seamus. Don't, don't hey, hold on. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. But uh, I need I to introduce you first. To interrupt. <laughs> but, but what's Airbnb? I I just I need to know what Airbnb so is. So Airbnb is kind of like it's Uber for hotels or bed and breakfasts rather. Um, it's a way nice. for people to kind of find places to stay when they go to when they go to a town they're unfamiliar with or whatever. And they can stay in someone's nice. house. They can basically rent someone's house or apartment or whatever they have. Uh, but this is going to be like creepy. Yeah, but this is libertarian version. So there's going to be like a couple of. So even Rothbard less creepy then. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, I'm about it. So Seamus from Freedom Tunes. So if you're Tunes. ever lost in New Hampshire, yeah. that's right. Seamus from Freedom Tunes. Holla. And, the, and the Freedom Fiends now. And the Freedom Fiends. I'm a fiend now. So if you guys are ready for some crazy action tonight, get ready for it. Because tonight's special guest is Seamus Coglin, the, the one and only. The Indeed. one, the only. And you're going to hear some rants. Here's one thing I've noticed about being on Freedom Fiends. Which I have enjoyed so far, by the way. It's only my second show, and that was last night. Or that was my second show. I'm sorry. Look at me having trouble with words right now. <laughs> I find that because Freedom Fiends is segmented, and it's actually on radio, and there's ads and such, that I don't really have a chance to go into it and go crazy, especially because there's several hosts. But on the Lulberts, I can really rant and get mm -hmm. nuts and get psycho. And you can get psycho. And you can effing cuss. I don't know you. Cuss and I can anyway. cuss. I can heck and swear. Except when I can every heck time and you say swear, swears. Every time you swear, you like intimate to me. Like, can you find that time where, you, where I said the f word and blank it out? I'm like, no. <laughs> That's true. I do that. <laughs> like, Jim, could you please edit out my swear word? Look, I'll I I'll take I, out the I, joke just... where I make fun of your girlfriend. I'll do that because I'm a nice guy. Uh, yeah, you're I'll a nice guy. You didn't even make fun of her. Joke. You just first of all. It was my ex girlfriend, so oh. you should have left it in. You should have left it in. Just let me tell you. Rip, no, I'm kidding. She's peace. she's still a sweetheart. She's still rip in pies, rip in pepperoni, my sweet hair and bony. But here's the point of what I'm trying to get across today to you, Jim. You ready for this shocking truth? Yes. That you ain't never heard before, boy. Stefan Molyneux was rude to a caller on his show. Yeah. Just today. Did you hear about it this? Today. It wasn't today. It was a couple of days ago. But it's gold. All right, whatever, whatever, Jim. Whatever, Jim. He was rude. Okay. He was very rude. All right, I'm sorry. I'm so energetic right now. I'm just being obnoxious. We have so many topics to get through, Jim. I don't even know how we're going to get through all these topics. There's yeah. so many of them. I would definitely There's want to so touch on topics. that Cantwell thing, which I can't read because we're, we're behind Ooh. the paywall. Or we're not. Because you don't know how. Yeah, he, bu he built a wall. What do you mean Pay, uh, we'll he built a wall. That. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. But oh, you can only read his content if you pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. And it's funny because I've been listening a lot recently to uh, a guy named Gay, uh, Gay, uh, Gary Vayn Vaynerchuk. Ever heard of him? Anyways, yes. he wrote this book, and it's all about like social marketing strategy, or it doesn't just mar social marketing, just marketing strategy. And he wrote this book called Jab 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 Right Hook, which I think <laughs> I think he may have read <laughs> when talking about an article about punching women. But uh, do you want to talk about yeah. that, or do you want to talk about Molyneux first? Because that Molyneux thing. Oh, there's so much. There's so much to get through here, Jim. Yeah. There's just so much. Let's start with Cantwell because we're and Milo. Well, here's the thing about Cantwell. Let me throw this out there. I don't know him. I've never spoken to him. Never had much of a problem with him because I haven't followed his career too closely. In fact, he may have even said things I've agreed with on the past. Please don't quote me on that because some I, that's not me saying I've agreed with everything he's ever said. Because my fear is I'll say, I agreed with some of the things he said. And people are going to be like, when Chris Cantwell said that 
this group of people should be gassed. You agreed with him or some ridiculous nonsense? So. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually advocating gassing. Yeah, people, I know. Just... Um, so y- y- here's the point. You know, he was always a loose cannon. Always a loose cannon. Always an out there fella. And he kind of had to be to a certain extent. That's sort of why he He's rose to his level. No, exactly. And every now and then, we need those. But edginess, just for the sake of edginess, without any real substance, which is what he has become, to my knowledge. I can't say that with any level of authority because I don't follow him too closely. But he recently released an article called... Behind, behind a paywall. How t- Behind a paywall. This is quality content, folks. You have to pay for it. And the name of the article is How to Hit Your Girlfriend. How to Hit Your Girlfriend. Here's how, Chris. You fucking don't. I'm no longer convinced That's... that the domestic violence is always wrong. I had mentioned this in passing during an episode against the number of Radical Agenda, which is his stupid podcast, which is cut off. It, it, I will say that it is great when he's on his little uh, meth binge. <laughs> Bad, bad audio, yeah. but worth it. Um, you know what? I, but I'm on a meth binge every now and then when I yeah. come on to, to your podcast. So. But he, he realized that the statement needs some clarification. Understandably, uh, most people say that it's never acceptable to use force for people you love, which is funny because I remember him railing against people who punch Nazis. And yeah. <laughs> so don't punch Nazis. Punch your girlfriend instead. There's pretty punch much- your girlfriend instead. How about don't punch either? Can we find a group of people who believes that neither should be punched? Your girlfriend certainly deserves to be punched less than Nazis, unless she is a Nazi. Maybe that's what he's getting at. He's like, don't punch a Nazi unless it's your girlfriend. Then you have permission. He did write some article recently about how like his one of his ex-girlfriends is a horrible person because, oh, she aborted my baby. But it's like, you know what? I, I'm starting to kind of lean to the pro-life side of things but at the same time i'm like it's cantwell's baby and uh <laughs> you're sick don't 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 that child does not deserve the death penalty for the crimes of its father i don't know but you know maybe the, maybe that, the, the planned that's, parenthood that's really outside, said no i was gonna say maybe that, the planned parenthood whole... outside of keen new hampshire should should have like the little motto uh this machine kills fascists i'll, I'll just say that <laughs> Damn, dude, that's harsh. I got to be honest, though. I really don't like Cantwell. I really don't like Cantwell, but I think that's messed up. I think it's sad. I, I do. That It does break my heart that that happened to him. You got to wonder three if times. maybe that's kind of... Three times. Three times, dude. That sucks. And I that's one of the things I agreed with him on. He posted something a while ago about how he had some ex-girlfriends who aborted his children. And I was like, wow, I actually thought it was really bold for him to talk about that. I gave him props. I really respected him for that. And But then he turns around and he says stuff like this. And now, to a feminist, they're both the same. They're like, he he regretted the fact that his girlfriend got an abortion without even consulting him. That's basically the same as saying it's okay to hit women. So it's like, the people on the left are going to categorize him as a terrible person regardless. But those of us with intellectual substance, not to toot my own horn, um, toot, toot. can tell the difference to, can, can tell the difference between something that's pretend misogynistic and that people claim is hateful because it bothers them and things that actually are hateful and the man says things that are actually hate yeah absolutely horrible um it's just horrible it's just, it's just so absolutely bad. horrible and i want to know what's behind this paywall because there probably is some kind of like nuanced satire or something going on that i i can't see but i i'm highly doubtful yeah it's clickbait probably it's probably yeah clickbait. yeah uh, you know paywalls. and i bet and i bet you that when people criticize him for this, he's going to be like, that's not what I meant. Why didn't you read the article? He's like, because I had to pay. For it. Yeah, if I'm it... not going to pay to hear you justify why it's okay to hit ladies. Because it's not ever. Unless it... unless she... Hmm, unless like, all right, so if, if a girl was beating up my pregnant sister, I'd deck her in the face. You feel me? If If it's one of those, if it's one of those situations... But for the most part, don't hit women, please. Yeah. Please. Oh, don't, don't, don't do hit. It. Just don't just hit. Don't people. hit people. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if they're just women don't. or not. Don't hit people. But well, I think Gavin McGinnis had had something kind of interesting to say. It's kind of like, what did he say? Like, if if a woman if a woman hits you twelve times, that's that's when you can <laughs> you can hit back. And I'm like, well, it's funny. The, I think the uh, the right. police actually say after three times, I believe. Yeah, I've but, seen it. So a, a while ago. Somebody I knew, I won't name names. I won't name names. Uh, someone I knew 
was dealing with a young lady, and he was a young man. We were all children at the time. And this 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 young woman was feeling very tough. Very tough. She started, like, hitting him. And he's like, cut it out. Stop hitting me. And she kept hitting him. She's feeling tough. She's feeling pretty cool. Bottom line is, he just let her wail on him. And he's like, this is just the worst. And later, the police came, because I guess she was just a loose cannon and got into a fight with some other girl. And then it was a problem. As soon as she started hitting girls, people were like, well, we'd better stop her. <laughs> and when we spoke to the police, <laughs> they were like, well, you know, he just kind of stood there and took it and got kind of bruised up because he thought he's not supposed to hit girls. And the police officer's like, here's what I'll tell you. The first three times a girl comes at you and hits you, you grab her arm, you try to push her away or restrain her. That fourth time, all bets are off. You deck, you deck her square in the mouth and spit on her when she's on the ground. No, he didn't go that far. But he was like, after the fourth time, I believe, or after the third time, it's it's fair game. Because think about all the things that can happen. Dude, if someone's just really wailing on you and decking you in the face, even if it's a woman, she can like knock one of your teeth out or something. And then that's a problem for the rest of your life. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. like. I used to you fight. Really have... I used to fight my sister when I was like, like a little kid. So I mean, like little kids fighting, whatever. It's just little kids fighting. Uh, but then yeah. once once I hit puberty and like I started gaining some muscle mass, I remember my, I was like at that point where I was like, I know if I hit my sister, it's gonna be like, it's it's gonna be horrible for her. <laughs> like, She's so, gonna die. Yeah, and I remember she was trying to pick a fight with me. It was the last fight she ever got in a fight with me with, and she was like beating on me. I was like, Cree, stop. You just suplexed her. You're like, no. I was like, stop. Stop, <laughs> stop. And then, and then I, I picked her up and I like, well, not really slammed, but it was kind of like, I held her up against the wall and I said, chill the F out. <laughs> and she was like, she threw, her- she threw her hands up and was like, all right, we're cool. <laughs> like, don't She's trip. like, hands up. She's yeah. like, hands up. Don't shoot. Hands up, Dude, don't you shoot. grabbed her. You, you picked her up by the neck and you held her. And no, said, no, 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 no. It was like under the arms. You left her. Yeah, kind of. You left her. No, don't yeah. lie, dude. You held her by the neck. You held her by the neck, and you lifted her up, and you went. No, I, I slid her up the wall like like a horror movie. <laughs> you, the wall. you said, "Listen here. You got real deep. Like, listen here. If you ever touch me again, you're dead." And then you uh, okay, picked her up. And boom! Onto the hardware floor. You just threw her. Boom! You're like, what? Get up! Get up! Was that supposed Not to be so Batman? Was that Batman? No. <laughs> or was no, that no. Batman Rorschach? would be like Batman. Batman would be like, don't get up off the floor. So, if you want to mess with Jim. <laughs> no, actually, I, I held her up against the wall and I was like, you forget. You're not. I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. You're stuck in here with me. <laughs> I said, I'm going to show this city your true colors. I'm going to show them what you're really about. Yeah, but anyway, speaking of. Uh, speaking of child abuse, Stefan Molyneux <laughs> recently went off on a caller who just wanted to be his I friend and give him some. On that one. <laughs> 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 he, he was just—he <sighs> just wanted to speak to a caller. This young man called in with an accent in broken <laughs> English, and he's like, "Hello, Stefan." He's like, "Yes, of course. Let's have a conversation." Uh, and he's like. I have, and Mike's like, Mike DeMarco's like, I noticed that when I do this thing, I, when you have conversations with people, this happens. Like, and he's your DeMarco is way he's, better than your Molyneux. I just had to point that out. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> he's just like his inflections. I forget what the kid said, but he's like, dear Steph, sometimes I notice when people call in, you're very rude to them instead of being nice. How can you help? <laughs> How can we improve this or something? And then Stefan's like, well, so are you better at convincing people than I am? And then he's like, um, no, I don't. That's not what I said. He's like, well, you're giving me advice on how I can convince people. So I think that you're saying that you're better at that than me. He's like, well, I guess. He's like, well, now I can't even trust you because you just changed your mind. (laughs) So he basically, (laughs) this guy gives him advice. He just asks him to be more polite to people because that'll be more likely to convince them, which is true. And I got to admit, I've got the same weakness as Molyneux. I can be kind of a jerk sometimes when I'm debating because we all get heated in the moment. But no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how good a debater you are, or how solid you think your persuasion skills are, you could always be nicer and you'll always do better. 
Yeah, sometimes like if you always take the high ground t- to the audience, at least maybe not to the person you're debating, because the person you're debating is going to be in that moment. But you know, yeah, the whole exactly. point of a debate is is A and B try to have a conversation to convince C. And if you're trying to convince yes. C, and one person is like, "Look, I think you might be a little bit um, crazy," and the other person's like, "What do you mean? What do you mean? I've been doing what do you this mean? for decades. Crazy. Decades. Crazy. How long have you been doing this? That's... How many how, how many yeah. subscribers do you have? Okay, it's like cool. you're yeah. appealing to your. First of all, like none of the things that he said were was an argument. No, it's like how many? <laughs> like, how how, how much money? Yeah, yeah. It's like how much money has been donated to you? And the kid's like one dollar. <laughs> It was like, <laughs> so it was like one dollar. He's like, I hope you berated him. Yeah, there was a, there was a guy who made a video response. He's only got like forty one subscribers. I'll I'll make a note to to, to maybe link. I'll link the video. But go subscribe to him because he's it's he's an interesting cat. But he's like a programmer, and he was kind of using like programming logic to kind of explain what the caller's point was and where Molyneux was kind of getting it wrong because the point <laughs> the point wasn't. I'm a better communicator than you. I mean, he, because he, he's English was clearly not his first language. You can totally yeah, tell. Yeah, and the, stuff, stuff turned it into a debate over who's better at convincing people when right. that was never what it was about. He he was saying that it's been my experience that when I'm talking to people and I'm nice to people, I have a better, uh, I have a better time convincing people <laughs> than when I'm a jerk. And I'm wondering and maybe. Like, Maybe your your <laughs> abil- your uh, all these abilities that you have, like right, and you can you can kind of stat them out and say, look, here's here's your here's your stats, right? Now, if you were to do this thing, you can increase this stat by this much and be a much more con- uh, uh, better communicator because you're already He's great like, no. already. And then he went and, and like, was like, no, you have to be mean to them. Yeah. What? And be he, nice, nice to people. He just kept turning this into a debate about like. You said that you're a better communicator and you don't even have a YouTube channel. <laughs> I know, dude. He's like, and he's all right. Not, first of all, not only not does that argument. not matter, and that's not an argument. So, not only does none of that even matter, even slightly, but the kid's argument was so benign. It was literally just, hey, be nicer to people. And he's like, no, no. Why would I? Ah, I've done philosophy for 34 years. Ah, nice. Um, and this kid calls in, and he, yeah, exactly what you said. He didn't actually say he was better at this than him. He just said he could help him. So, for example, if Jim and I are both pilots, we're both pilots who fly airplanes, pilots, and <coughs> Jim is the number one pilot around town, and but there's just one thing he does poorly. And I'm, like, not such a great pilot, but I do that thing really well. So I just go, hey... Jim, you're a good pilot and all, but maybe do this and mm-hmm. you'll improve. Ah, are you saying I've been flying for 34 years and you think you're a better pilot than me? It's just such an insecure tactic. I don't know why he got that bothered. He's like, right. He got then, triggered. Like, he, that's, that's the best way to describe I it. Know. He was triggered. And then he got he got triggered too when the kids said uh, there was some phrase he used, carried away. He said, you get carried away. He's like, oh, what does that mean? He's like, what does carried away mean? Oh. And he's like, um, I don't know what carried away means. And then when the kid goes to explain what carried away means, Stefan's like, actually, no, carried away means that blah, 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 blah. It means that you think I'm a loose cannon. Or, and it's like, well, but you just asked him what it meant and claimed you didn't know. So I don't know why you're mansplaining <laughs> when this boy's just trying to get his point across. And so then the comments, poor little man. boy. Oh, those comments. I know, dude. I couldn't even get through the video. I couldn't get through it, man. <laughs> I, oh, I, I was. Did. It was beautiful. Of I watched it like did. a couple times. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> you probably watched it like eight times. You're like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> it, it, it was some good. It was good. It was some good Molyneux cringe porn. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But it's kind of funny. Like Which the comments. Like your section, favorite genre. Yeah. The, the comment oh, section <laughs> was, is absolutely great. Uh, but it looks like they're kind of getting pruned. I'm noticing a lot of the top comments are just kind of disappearing. Um. Yeah. Which there is like a service you can go. I can't I can't remember what it's called and I'm not going to link it because I'm lazy. But there is like some service where it scrapes YouTube comments into like a, a spreadsheet. And so I, I saved a couple of them just to make sure that, you know, I got some older, older good ones. But there was a lot of people saying Definitely. like, look, Steph, this is what he's saying, that you're really terrible at convincing people when you act like this. 
And then when you act like yeah. this during the call, you can see that everybody in the comment section is getting upset and downvoting your video. So I yeah, think exactly. I think you're proving his point. And then his response, not an argument. And it's like, no, that actually no, is an argument. an argument. What's not an argument actually, is appealing to yeah. your own subscribers, appealing to your own authority, <laughs> appealing to your popularity. Um, and I know. That's all he did. None of that stuff mattered. Yeah. That's all it was. You. <laughs> it was, well, it was just actually, a train wreck. <laughs> as it turns out, uh, he's like, as it turns out, I'm better than you. He's like, oh, he, when the kid calls in, he's like, um, I just want to say that you'd be more convincing if you did this. He's like, oh, oh, does, uh, does that work on your philosophy podcast? <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Does that, does that work on your number one most downloaded philosophy podcast in the world? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait, you don't have. You don't have the number one most downloaded philosophy podcast on the internet. I do. Uh. I, he's he's like a super villain. I don't know why he was. I felt maybe he's just having a bad day. You know, maybe he's having a bad day, but at least apologize. Say, hey, I'm sorry, bud. I, went, I was over the line. You're, you're a young man who looks up to me and well, I just crushed you. I was so petty and relentless and merciless in my beratement of you for a single innocent suggestion. He couldn't say that, though. He had to say, that's not an argument. It's not an argument. Obviously, this kid was spanked. I get it. Uh, and that's what bothers me. I was like, Steph, why don't you get into this kid's childhood trauma? That's what he should have done, but he didn't. That's what I was waiting for. I was like, Stefan, please tell this kid that his attractive single mother left him at daycare and then spanked him. <laughs> because then we could have a real idea of what, <laughs> then we could get to the bottom of this. But you didn't. And you, you had a responsibility to the viewers. Oh, What's wrong with me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure <laughs> that part out. <laughs> You're like, what's wrong with this kid? I don't know, man. I feel you. What were you going to say? You've been following Molyneux for a lot longer than I have. Yeah, well, I've been we... following him. Oh, man. I remember I was listening to an episode of Free Talk Live. And this was back in the days of like uh second life when i used to play second life a lot and there was this, this is like before it just turned into a just a giant cyber sex f fucking field Girl. but there was like a time where people used to hang out and do like non-sex thing especially when casinos and stuff were there still and i remember there was like this libertarian thing that was ran by my friend which i ended up taking over later on it was like this little libertarian hangout and then every it was, the big thing was every night when free talk live was on we'd all sit around and listen and talk uh and chat oh nice it was kind of neat. And one of the people that was there regularly was like, oh, my God, Stefan Molyneux is going to be on tonight. This is going to be uh, this is going to be great. And I was like, St Steph, who? Now, this was long before Stephon Ron Mala Paul. Stefan Molyneux? Yeah. I was like, this is long before Ron Paul. Stefan Molyneux? So, yeah, I've been a libertarian longer than you. Not to... <clears throat> I'm rubbing my yeah, nose on well, my shirt. No, that's not. Yeah, yeah but I've been a yeah. libertarian better than you. Like, <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. <laughs> You've been a libertarian. Well, how many years would you say? Uh, actually, I've been a libertarian. For, oh, geez. Since 2005. Yeah. 20. Uh, okay. So, but like since the 2000s, but I've been, an I've been a libertarian since the 90s. Yeah. I just, I've been a libertarian since the 90s, Jim. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> What I was born. First of all, was, all right, so I've you've been, been a libertarian I, 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 since 05? Yeah, 05? But I've been, oh, that's 12 I've been years? A, yeah. But I've been, a, uh, I've been an ANCAP for 10, and I just recently passed my 10-year anniversary last October. I actually was like, all right. I remember when I turned, and I dug it out of my email box, and I was like, there it is. It was a train ride I was on when I when I was listening to Rothbard. <laughs> no. So here's yeah. – here's, Jim, here's the problem, though, with your argument. So you're saying that you've been a libertarian for longer than mm -hmm. I have been? But you have 10 times the subscribers that I do. Subscribers <laughs> for 12? <laughs> well, not only that, I wasn't even going to bring that into it. I was just going to say you've been a libertarian for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I've been a libertarian for probably about four or five years. But you're failing to realize that I am so cognitively dense that the amount of thought that crosses my mind in just several minutes takes you an entire year to string together that's not an argument so that is an argument jim i think about libertarianism for 20 minutes and i'm already more advanced in it and more well versed in it than you have been after 12 years so who's really been the libertarian longer me see no jim you're not listening you're not listening jim 
I I'm sorry, we're Mike. We're going to move on to the next caller. But <laughs> no, no, no. Listen here, him, Jesus. Here's what you're failing to realize. You All right, so yeah, you've been libertarian for like 12 years, but you've maybe thought about it for like a collective total of five minutes throughout that 12 years. You know, you don't think about it much. Maybe like... Maybe like you've thought about it for like three hours total. It's crossed your <laughs> mind every now and then. But like, I, oh yeah, this I is, think this about is the it. cool kids club. I guess I'll sit in it for a bit. Oh, something to uh, think yeah. about. Mm, okay, done. Next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just think about libertarianism for for several seconds every month or so. It's I live and breathe it. I I think about it constantly. Not an argument. Anyways, that is an uh, argument. <laughs> but like, that so was that was like debate, the dude. first time I heard about him. Uh, <laughs> <I> was like <laughs> I totally derailed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this guy seems pretty interesting. And there was a, and the one thing that always bothered me that he was always constantly bringing up like relationships and stuff. And I was like, why does this guy keep talking about psychology? He's not a psychologist. I mean, his <laughs> wife is, <laughs> but he's not. And it's kind of it. It got to the. It got really annoying. I think I can finally say this thing. It's so weird, dude. I feel you there. I don't like that. Yeah. I and, don't like that. And but, it always bothered me. But other than that, I was good. And so I kind of put always in the and on top of that, like he was always pretty, like every day there was like videos upon videos and it was just clogging my subscription. And I was just like, I'll just work around it. And it was like when the Zeitgeist thing was coming about, I started watching him a little bit more because like he was one of the only he was like one of the few people who was kind of addressing it from a libertarian standpoint and i kind of hopped in the fray as well with the uh, with the uh, the zeitgeisters and uh yeah it was kind of interesting Damn. and then uh, yeah. one thing that kind of was like bugging me because like i remember like there was like all these cult accusations around his head and there was a debate between him and uh, some guy named vtv which who was a horrible person horrible person but he's like a zeitgeister and he was like oh. <laughs> they brought up this thing like like oh yeah uh, like I can't believe people called the Zeitgeist movement a cult. I mean, like it's it's just a giant ad hom bomb and stuff like that. And he was, and the guy ended up using that segment to show like, st- stop you libertarians to stop calling us a cult because look look what your dear leader said. And it was like everybody was even people who were libertarians were like, yeah, I like Stefan Molyneux and all, but you know, the, the guy may actually be a cult leader. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dude, so. because he is. No, I don't know enough about it to say that. It just feels right. I've done a little bit of research on him, and I haven't gotten the full picture, but it does seem like he's up to something sketchy there. And young, impressionable men give him their money and stop talking to their parents. So what do you call that? Bottom line is he was rude, and him being yeah. rude hurt my feelings, and it didn't convince me. I was more convinced by that young man's argument, ironically. So who's the better convincer here? But he couldn't even Moving get his, on, Jim. He couldn't even get, his, he couldn't even get it in because every three seconds it was like, it's like, that's no, but that's not what you said in the email. It's like, no, that's give, the said, give the dude a break. Give the dude a break. He's like, am I, am I, not, am I talking to you language. from the email or am I talking to you from now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, the first time, uh, th- this is about, this is about as Molyneux as Molyneux has gotten. I remember yeah. there was one other example, and it was actually the reason I made that puppet video of him. I saw a video of his called Descended from Extraterrestrials. And I clicked it to watch it because I remember thinking, that's interesting. I want to hear what Steph's take is on the ancient alien theory because <laughs> that's always been fascinating to me. And so in the video, guess what, Jim? Guess what? He doesn't discuss ancient aliens. Guess what he does discuss? His caller's childhood. Well, <laughs> color me shocked. <laughs> color me shocked. This young man calls in and he's like, hey, Steph, I just want to talk about ancient aliens. And he's like, well, let me stop you right there, because when you just say to me that you want to talk with ancient aliens without saying hello first, without asking me how I'm doing, <laughs> what that says to me is that you don't have proper communication skills. And he berates this kid for like an hour and a half. And at one point in the podcast, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's a pretty accurate paraphrase. And you can quote me on it or paraphrase me on it, I should say. And Steph says something along the lines of when you say I want to have a conversation about how we're descended from extraterrestrials what i hear is i never learned to properly communicate with my parents <laughs> <laughs> and i was like what yeah what what the hell are you talking about he said he wants to talk about ancient aliens and you heard i never learned to properly communicate with my parents i'm not surprised that that's what you heard when he said it but that's not what i heard that's not what anyone else would hear no, the, i want to find it descended the, the, no, the I best thing we, I, I ever heard. The best thing I ever heard was there was a, a zeitgeist who called anyone. He wanted to debate the RBE, 
resource-based economy thing that they believe, which is basically Marxism with robots. And he, he yeah. was talking, and then like something slipped out about being into like a, like a diaper fetish. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> at, like he kept he kept trying to steer that conversation over to childhood trauma, and the whole time he was like, I didn't call in for that. I want to talk about this. And then like for some like certain he slipped in diaper like he was talking on like a diaper fur thing, and he was like he gave like the abbreviation of what it was. He was like. <laughs> I have no idea what that abbreviation is. And he was like, oh, I thought you would have known you're on the internet. And he was like, just because I'm on the internet doesn't know. I mean, all the, uh, <laughs> all of them. And he was like, what was it? It was called like, oh, it's called like diaper furs or something like that. And he was like, okay, are you sure you're not calling in about your trauma? And that was like the first time where I was like, I think this is the only time <laughs> that <laughs> That's asking about the childhood trauma <laughs> may actually be an argument. <laughs> That's true. He may have been right on that one, actually. Yeah. He's probably right there. <laughs> but that all the other were... times I was just like, all right, this is just ridiculous because I know you can refute the Zeitgeist movement. It's not that hard to do. The, he has he has the, the chops. He he knows what he's well read on all of these topics, including the economic calculation problem. But the one it's time to trauma. The one time <laughs> that Stefan was right about someone's childhood. I bet the guy walked away like, Thank you, you fixed me. He's like, I'm all better now. <laughs> He's like, I'll never spank my children. Uh, yep. I found, by the way, I'm gonna put this in the link. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you this link. Try to put it in the podcast notes because I found Steph's video. Did we descend from extraterrestrials? And let me tell you something. Uh, it's two and a half hours long of Stefan berating this young man for <laughs> asking him about aliens. And I don't remember at which point he mentions that. This kid had a bad childhood, and he, this was indicated to him by the fact that he asked him about aliens. Well, that's what transcripts um, are for. YouTube's transcripts are beautiful. If you're looking for something, you could probably find it in the YouTube transcripts. It's not perfect, but... Oh, I don't know yeah. how to do that. Oh. Ooh, you're going to have to show me. Ooh. Ooh, it's sexy, but... <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, that was gross. That was gross. Give me burp. <clears throat> sure. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Did you bleep that out, Jim? Bleep that out. I don't want that. Bleep too that bad, out. Too bad, too bad, too bad. I... Anyways, I don't want that. And hey, remember, remember when I said the f word earlier in this podcast? <laughs> no, I'm gonna need you to bleep that. No, nope, but I'm, I'm gonna need you to, to bleep. Too bad. Bleep it! I will bleep it. Send me the file, and I'll bleep it because I don't want that out there. You're you're bleeping it. You Speaking understand? of bleeping, uh, let's talk about let's talk about dear Milo. <laughs> Good old. Milo Yiannopoulos, yeah. Rip in Pepperoni. Yeah, um, I miss him. Oh, well, yeah. We I need the Enya him. song now. Was it Enya? That's what Enya. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, who can say where the wind blows? I think that's all you can sing before YouTube uh, algorithms will find that and <laughs> prevent me from monetizing. Only the video. time. Um, you know what I noticed though? <laughs> I got to throw this in there about Steph. I think that Steph. <laughs> actually really wants to be a singer because i notice he always slips these oh, singing analogies in he's like oh, look i'm not a good singer so that's he's like that's how i do this early life. Oh, but he's like i think that's stefan i really think that he wanted to be a singer or he said that he can't sing because he always brings up the fact that he can't sing to his callers and I think he secretly wants one of them to be like no you what are you talking about you're oh, great at singing stuff shit. like i think you want to hear some cringe. There is a video oh, of Molyneux organizing everybody at Porkfest to sing a parody of, um, uh, it was a Queen song, and I can't remember which Queen song it is, but he rewrote all the words to be ANCAP. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And it was so cringe, and he was trying to sing it with a bunch of other people. And, of course, you know, when Donald Trump, his, his, when Donald Trump won, he just released a video that says, like, we did it. <laughs> And when you watch it, just him singing uh, uh, the Star Spangled Banner, which I try to use to make like I tr ever seen. I don't know if you oh, saw my right. Chili Man video. Like I tried to, to use like a piece of that because I was like, OK, maybe he's singing in tune. And as I was like trying to modulate it, I was like realizing like he didn't actually sing any of those notes in key, <laughs> like none of them. So I couldn't use them. <laughs> I couldn't use I couldn't use any clips of them. Oh, day. Yeah, unless God I really you. want to get down to modulating it even yes. down to the oh, nub. It say. Yeah. Oh, say, can you see? What a statist! <laughs> and he's Canadian no, on um, top of that. <laughs> I know, and he's singing 
He loves government so much, he's singing someone else's national anthem. Yeah. Yo mama's so status, <laughs> she sings someone else's national anthem. Um, so, about Anyways, not Milo. Milo back good buddy. Oh, oh, hold on, I just wanted to Milo. say. Milo. Yeah, because we had MK on, and we talked about Milo a little bit. And she's more of she the, kind of the left persuasion, so I wanted she to get some balance. Because you're kind of more, you're more righty. You face it. You're, you uh, What? I uh, know. Here's the thing. MK Lords loves Molyneux. I see, or she, I'm sorry, she, and she loves Milo. I see her post about him. <laughs> she's a big fan. It's not an argument. She's. Yeah, it's not an argument. I and so, um, I know. So so MK. Lords I'm gonna get the worst angry email from her now. Like, how dare you <laughs> let him say that on your show? How could you bring him on? All right, and then you know what I'm gonna say when you get that email, uh, MK Lords. I know you think you're better at persuading people than I am, but I've been doing this for 35 years. And you have you think you're you better at writing angry emails? I have more subscribers, and I write angrier emails than you do. And I've been doing it for 35 years since I was 16. Um, no, the, um, the thing about Milo, and I don't really know MK Lords that well, but she seems cool, but except I, a lot I of people, a I... lot of, I get, I get a lot of feedback every time she's on and it's funny cause I'll get Positive feedback from people and like we have, we have one of our guests who actually advocates like anarcho monarchism and they're okay with that. <laughs> but God mentioned that like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I have like a nuanced version of feminism, which eh, there was there was She's stuff like, that I'm I didn't feminism. agree with. And there was a lot of stuff I didn't agree with. And I didn't want to p- I'm picking my battles with her. But um, no, I feel that I, I, I feel I, that you got to do that with the ladies. I don't agree with anybody that comes on the show. Like the only person I can't find a disagreement with, it would be Nick. <laughs> like he's like the me. only Probably one that I'm like, because there's got to right. be something no. I disagree with you on. But. No, you dis- you agree with me on everything, Jim. No. Nope. And if you don't, then we're going to have to Actually, argue Actually, I disagree about with you on that, t- but go ahead. <laughs> it's the only thing. So <laughs> it's funny to me because I know that Milo rose to the top very quickly. And it was quite fascinating, quite the spectacle. And one thing that I came to notice is the more people on the left whined and cried about it, the more powerful he got. And at the end of the day... When he was taken down, or as we believe him to be taken down at the present moment, it's possible he will rise from his grave. However, Where's my theremin? <laughs> he was put in a position where he seems to have been destroyed, at least presently. And it was definitely organized. That was for sure. It was organized. That's for sure. Let me tell you. Actually, I don't think so, Jim, because I saw a Vox article called Look at this. Meet the 16 year old Canadian girl who took down the alt right Nazi, Milo Yiannopoulos. And it was like, this 16 year old girl did it. You go, girl. And so I actually think it was just a 16 year old girl, Jim. I don't think this was coordinated. Just some random girl. Like, you know, you know who needs to go down? Um, but anyway, as I was saying, let me get to the point here and stop joking around. This is the Lulberts. I didn't mention that, right? Go ahead. Yeah, this is the Lulberts. <laughs> Milo Yiannopoulos. That was disgusting. So if That's Milo great. Yiannopoulos' career is over, and it appears it may be, though I will not make predictions, for the it's most actually part. a win. It's actually a win for free speech yep. and the free market and anti-political correctness. And the reason for which I say this is because people heard what he had to say and they rejected it. The statements he uttered bothered people to the point where they no longer wanted to listen to him. It wasn't social justice warriors crying about it. It wasn't lefties rioting. It wasn't people getting his book deal canceled. And it certainly wasn't people complaining about the fact that he had a right to speak freely or arguing that violence is ethical as a tactic to silence him. It was just people listening to what he had to say and rejecting it. Which is what we've been saying is the proper course of action all along. So really, it's not as though this is a dark day for freedom of speech. It's just one of the consequences of freedom of speech, and it's beautiful. Now, that being said, I do think it's a little ridiculous that after he said what he said, which is essentially that child molestation or rape is acceptable in certain circumstances because he believes that a grown man is helping a young gay gentleman explore himself sexually which is of course a ridiculous and repulsive yeah. notion however or because you hate he could men. at least argue that's true i'm just a homophobe but he could at least argue and i'm not justifying any of this but in his circumstance he could at least argue that he was using dark humor to cope with the fact that he himself was sexually assaulted when lana dunham admitted in her book to sexually <laughs> assaulting her little sister and made light of it 
that wasn't a big deal to anybody outside people on the right and a very few logically and ideologically and intellectually consistent people on the left. And for the most part, what she said was totally ignored by the mainstream, even though it was far worse. Because if Milo had actually admitted to sexually assaulting somebody, this would have been a whole other issue. What he said would have been even worse. Objectively speaking, this isn't even just my opinion. It would have been worse. What he said was still bad. Don't get me wrong. But it's just crazy to me that as long as you have the proper political opinions, you can say or do whatever you want. And the elite won't take issue with it. Yeah, I think, I think George Decay said almost had had an exact a similar. Act. No, it was the exact same story almost, except it wasn't at Catholic school. Like, it was. Oh my! Oh my! Oh at camp. my! Oh my! <laughs> uh, 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 he he uh, uh, had an exact uh, uh, same experience at a summer camp. Like there was an older yeah. camp counsel- counselor. He was about the same age, maybe year give or, give or take a year. And yeah, and he was okay with that. Nobody had a problem with that on the left, at least. I mean, Slate and was it either Slate or Salon. I think it was Salon. Sounds more like a Salon thing. Salon had like yeah. multiple articles defending this guy who was a pedophile. But don't worry, he doesn't act on his thing. But we should all just accept. yeah, he doesn't act on it. And, yeah. Mi- and Milo exposed him. Milo yeah. exposed that. He, <laughs> he's exposed a number of pedophiles. It's yep. funny because when, whenever me, you know, I hang out with some some young chaps who aren't even particularly politically active. But one thing we always say to one another, whenever one of us says something outrageous or that the other two disagree with, one of us will be like, well, dude, where do you get your info? Salon.com? <laughs> <laughs> like, because it's just the dumbest news source in the world. And I think that one really sad thing about this situation is what will go over your head. Because I remember hearing Milo say all this stuff that he said about ebophilia or ephebophilia on the Joe Rogan experience. And I just remember thinking he's probably joking around. This is sick, but it actually made me uncomfortable. And I sort of skipped ahead. I don't want to hear him because, you know, Milo does the little bit where he just says any ridiculous thing. And if people agree with him, then he was being serious the whole time. And if there's pushback, oh, I'm just kidding, darling. (laughs) And so it just just seemed like another case of that. Exactly. (laughs) It's Kansa. And now that I've actually seen what he said in the live streams, um, it does come off more as though he was actually defending it and not just joking. Again, it's still possible this was his personal way of coping with sexual assault. But look, if his mouth is going to catch up to him on anything, it should be this. Yeah, I, I I don't know what's more offensive, what he said or the fact that you listen to the drunken peasants. I don't listen to the drunken peasants, believe me. <laughs> I just saw the clip because I wanted to investigate this. I uh, promise I don't listen to the drunken peasants. Who's TJ Kirk? Uh, I think that. When I first heard that he was defending pedophilia and ephebophilia, I wanted to investigate it because I know the media has a tendency to spin these things. For example, just a few weeks prior, <laughs> to say when the people least. were rioting, <laughs> when people were rioting, check this out, Jim. A few weeks prior, when people were rioting at Duke? Uh, no. Was it Duke? No, it was Berkeley? Zoo? UC Berkeley? No, it was UC Berkeley. Okay. Yeah. So a few weeks prior, when people were rioting at UC Berkeley over Milo Yiannopoulos coming to speak, Cenk Uger of the Young Turks, who's probably the most brilliant political commentator. Come on, come on, come on. Of course, come on. Of course, of course. course. All right, okay, guys. So uh, so Milo, Milo, Nemo. All right, so Nemo out there. You shut up. I'm totally going to get Alex Darian on you right now, okay? Like, literally... I'm Fuck better than you. you okay, I'm, and you know that I, it's serious because oh. I cussed. That's right, dude. Oh, Crowder's impression was great. <laughs> but here's the point, Jim. If you're gonna let me get to the end of a sentence, Jim. No. J I N. No. No way, Mister. Um, Jank Uger actually got Freedom on. Tunes is cancer. His, <laughs> Freedom Tunes is cancer, darling. Jank Uger got on his podcast like the day after the UC Berkeley riots took place, and claimed that it was an alt-right conspiracy to stop funding to the sciences. I'm not kidding. You can watch it. He's like, okay, so all I'm saying is, you know, let's say you had a couple of alt-right Milo Nazi sympathizers in the audience causing problems. Oh, no. Oh, oh, we're not going to give funding to the universities. Oh, they do science there. They make science at the universities. Oh, we don't want that because we don't like science. He's just, uh, all right, this is all I'm saying. And, I was like, Are you, really? and I'm saying, like, he is 
fucking an asshole. And you know I'm serious because I cussed. Anna Kasparian is calling in to ask a question about whether or not the F word is acceptable on the air. She fine. Dude, I would love. And you remember when Steph got in? Actually, Steph did get into a debate with her a while ago, didn't he? They had a feud. Oh. He's like, I don't wear makeup. He's like, I don't wear makeup in my videos because I have to be smart. It was, of it was. There's just something rude. It was something rude. It was cringy on one side, but it was like the it was like the one time where I was like, "Fuck you, Steph! Why are you making me agree with Anna?" <laughs> like, I know. <coughs> she, what, what he, he was, was right saying, about something. Yeah, like he, she was she she made like some video or whatever, and it was just kind of like an offhand, like just common liberal co- tact. Uh, position like who cares just but he made like, intellectual this video. liberal banalities yeah and he was like <laughs> and but he was littering the, the conversation or littering his his thing with um like she I mean she's wearing makeup like if would you would take a little bit less time putting on makeup and a little bit more time refining your arguments and, <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like she like her basic response was like she had Joe Rogan on, but she saved it until after he he was on her show because there was something planned for that Joe Rogan that last Joe Rogan he was on for sure, and he he brought uh, they were talking and he was like, I mean like I, I, like there was some things that he said that you know like whatever, but like he just kept saying like these things about like me wearing makeup like what the fuck <laughs> like. <and it's> kind of, <laughs> Like and I cuss, so you know it's on. And, <laughs> and you know it's real. I'm not real. Yeah, dude, Steph Bot is so ridiculous. He lied to Joe Rogan's face. Yeah. But several things. I can't remember what. I just remember being convinced that that uh, was. Oh, Defu only came a up a couple of the times in my my thing. And there was like this great compilation was- that True News, True True News, True Shibes did. <laughs> where uh, she went through like all of the podcasts about defooing, and then she ended up updating it because uh, a friend of mine, Burger Time, had actually listened to every Stefan Molyneux podcast, not from start to finish, but from finish to end. Like he started at the very newest podcast and worked all the yeah, way. Yeah, you back. mentioned that to me. Yeah, and it's really kind of interesting to go through all those timestamps, and people have been going through those timestamps and been like, "Oh, Stefan's now is now saying that he, you know he has no Jewish blood in him." Well, let's go to the tapes, <laughs> finding like all this stuff where he was like, "Oh yeah, my, my mother was a Jewish woman. She grew up in in Germany." <laughs> this other stuff. It's like, oh, you can't be a fascist if you're Jewish, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Unless you're Milo. Yeah. Apparently. So I guess at the end of the day, what I was trying to get across in our conversation on Milo, if we just want to do a little hop, skip and a jump back to that, <laughs> is that Milo Yiannopoulos is quite a controversial public figure. And what seems to have brought him down, if anything brought him down, is, is that he's a racist, he's that not fucking, fucking Nazi. He's a Nazi. He's a Nazi. <laughs> Nemo is a Nazi. And <laughs> he... She says bigoted things that hurt my feelings, and that's the definition of Nazi. That's literally the definition of Nazi. I am so good at derailing you. Go back. <laughs> I'm getting too good at Yeah, that. I know. <laughs> I, need to, I need to start watching out. Okay, back People to Milo. Like, that kid is so... S- back to Milo. I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> the whole, yeah, whole point... I think the whole point was Mo- that Milo said something and free speech won out because rather than taking him down by violence or whatever what took him down in the end was people who who liked him finding what he said so repulsive that they didn't want to associate with him anymore and he lost his book yes. deal he lost his uh, speaking engagement at mm. cpac and it was a little yes. bit coordinated but it doesn't look like it was coordinated by the left at all it looks like it was all coordinated yeah. by conservatives that frightens me even more because you know that's just establishment types who are worried by the fact that he was moving the movement to a more anti-PC, moderate, liberal, slash libertarian center. Yep. And uh, that's that's kind of discouraging. Well, I don't know if he's really... I mean, like, he's... he's <clears throat> He's made some comments about libertarians about how they're all obsessed with weed and Bitcoin and stuff like that. No, yeah, he doesn't love libertarian. But no, he, he doesn't but love libertarian. The, then on the but other hand, he'll, everyone, he'll praise them. Yeah, everyone on the right is claiming he's a, he was a libertarian now. Back when he was popular, like, he's not libertarian. And they're like pedophilia. This guy's definitely a libertarian. <laughs> but let me tell you. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Did you ever see the that? that it's a quadru- because <laughs> yeah, did yeah, you see- yeah. No, I saw that. <laughs> just it's a febophilia if she's thirteen. Somebody commented. I was laughing so hard. So 
I should throw this out there because it involves a shout out. And I do want to give this person a shout out. It's a fellow named Chris John Cox. And I believe I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, he writes for Libertarian Republic. He has a podcast. Ew. He's part of Being Libertarian. He has a podcast called I and Cap and also a Facebook page called I and Cap. And he writes some pretty interesting stuff. Usually I find libertarian thought pieces banal because I've heard all the talking points and even made most of them myself at various points in time. But he actually made a pretty convincing argument. Closer to your mic, pedophilia. please. If one this was is a ever teaching needed, hospice. What? Uh, what? Was I too far from my mic? Yes. Now you're too close. Here's the. <laughs> yeah, so here's the point of what I was trying to say. Is this too close, Jim? Yeah. Am I too close to Don't clip mic? on my show. <laughs> so. Don't clip on me. Is this good? Is this good, Jim? Is yes. this good? I. Uh, so my friend Chris, as I was saying, wrote a pretty interesting article about why you know pedophilia is bad, and but it was I figured it was just going to be a, you know what what can you get more mainstream on what position can you take that I'm not going to have heard argument you know what I'm saying like how it, it just felt like something he wouldn't need to go over but I still thought he did a good job of it but there was a comment that was like um technically. These age of consent laws, they're ridiculous. Because what if a 13 or 14 year old is sexually mature? I was like, oh my gosh, you better be a 13 or 14 year old in the comment section because that's disgusting. But I, and I, I think I sent you a screenshot, actually. Did you? I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah. No, I did. I don't believe it. I'm going to find it right now. I'm yeah. going to find it. Dude, I can I am cannot, familiar I with cannot... I and Cap a little bit. Uh, and when you said that he wrote for the Libertarian Republic, I don't think that's right. I think he wrote for Libertarian Hangout. Now, no, or he he wrote Low Liberty Hangout and Libertarian Republic. He wrote for both. Okay, so if mm-hmm. if you were asking me to pit those two, like I would gladly take Libertarian Republic over Libertarian Hangout any day of the week. <laughs> What's wrong with Liberty Hangout? Everything's wrong with Liberty Hangout. I don't know. See, I don't. I'm not in the. I'm not in the loop enough on a lot of this stuff. Now, I'm liber- just kind of in my own world. Yeah, the Libertarian Republic is – there's ANCAPs that write for it. Uh, yeah. But it's ran by Austin Peterson who uh, you know I, I have some issues with. Not like – it's it's not like the kind of issues that I would take with like someone like Molyneux or Jeff Berwick or like terrible things. Mm-hmm. It's more like, yeah. okay, he's, he's, he's a jerk. Um, but I'm a jerk too. So, it, But he's like a different kind, yeah. of, kind of smarmy jerk. Um. He, I think you guys just need to. But the Liberty up. Hangout thing, like they were like they're supposed to be completely ANCAP, but they were pushing hard, hard for Austin Peterson to get the nomination. And anytime mm-hmm. anybody was like like questioning on them, they were like blocking them. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, funny. Yeah, and I guess like Jared Howe is also kind of I don't know if he's involved with it, but I know that he's like good friends with the 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 the, the main guy who runs that thing. And Jared Howe is like the worst, which is kind of funny because I have. Uh, you know, Jeremy. you're talking smack on all these people. <laughs> you're talking smack on all these people, and you're going to get me in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> but Jared, see, you're going to get me in trouble because I work with some of them. Do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Freedom Tunes or Freedom Tunes Incorporated. There is something that Jim and I disagree on. <laughs> oh, all right, okay, I found it. I found. Hold on, I found this comment. By the way, I'm going to read it out loud to you. Um, so. I ANCAP published a video called Pedophile Apologists Are a Threat to Civilization. And I watched it and I liked it. And my comment, I will read it out loud to you because it's essentially what I just said a moment ago, but I would like to sing his praises more eloquently on the air. I normally find libertarian thought pieces rather banal, but I really enjoyed this. Good job, Chris. You hit it out of the park. Excellent observations and solid word choice. See, I gave him some praise. Right underneath me, the comment says, So when does an individual gain the ability to consent? In British common law, it was 12, which makes sense since at that <laughs> point, you're either in puberty or post-pubescent. Okay, no 12-year-old is past puberty. I don't – what percentage of 12-year-olds are um, through with puberty? I don't even think it happens. I think it, I think it does a happen a little bit more it. now because there's – just because caloric intake is so cheap now that um, – so it's so like a lot of people are kind of, kind of concerned that l- puberty is happening earlier and earlier, especially in women uh, or girls, whatever. Um, <laughs> like, not going down that road. Fuck that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to yeah. end up like Milo, dude. Yeah, but you don't want to end up like Milo. But women are kind of developing like, a lot earlier, and it's not because of the hormones in the milk, but a lot of it's just because easy access, <laughs> easy access to to calories, and, be, and if women have enough 
stored body fat, they'll, they'll it'll kick them into uh, to, to puberty earlier just because they have the fat to put in those voluptuous places, which I don't find very yeah. voluptuous at that age. But that's that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I'm not going down. I got what you're saying. I'm not going down that. No, I get what you're saying. Except I well, it's like it's like when Milo. It's like when Milo was on Joe Rogan experience and Milo's like, you're telling me you've never found a 15 year old girl attractive. He's like, yeah, when I was 15, what the hell's <laughs> wrong with you? And that's like, I feel the exact same way. All right. I'm only 21 years old. Going to be 22 later this month at 22. I would never even look at a 15 year old girl that way. That's gross. They're too young. That's too young. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen some, some 15 year old girls that were like, oh, wait, hold on. No, there you're not 18. <laughs> like no, 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 no. You're sick. I'm out. I'm yeah. bailing. I, but um, honestly, I wouldn't even date an 18 year old girl. I wouldn't, or a 19 year old, or even 20. No, I, I, I think for me, for me, 21. That's my cutoff line. If I can't take you to a bar, you're boring. And especially, and like, you know what else, Jim? Do you know what else? Teen it's girls also are horrible. They're and horrible and like, people. I think like underneath 50 is like, that's their cutoff line for you. Cause I don't, I can't see any woman ever wanting anything to do with you unless they were like old and desperate. You feel me? Oh, you, you, you don't know me. Money is very attractive. <laughs> I'm big money Kratom right here, buddy. <laughs> big, big, big daddy from Cincinnati up the, in here. Gonna, big... gonna steal your lady. No, I'm, I, I feel you there though. Like under 21, it's just too young. It's just too young for me. Yeah, I mean, if I can't take I'm, them to a bar, but... if I can't take them, and especially I live in Vegas where everything is 21 and over, almost everything fun to do is 21 and over, everything, yeah. like, even even like a hookah bar <laughs> is 21 and what? over. What? Like, hookah bars are 21 and over? They serve, That's ridiculous. Because a lot of them have alcohol. They oh. serve alcohol, so, yeah. Because everything wants Damn, to cater dude. to, you know, a tourist, and tourists only really come well, here plus, dude, 21 it, and over, so. I just imagine... I still just I feel like I imagine it would be just weird dating a girl that young. Mm -hmm. I know that historically it's been the norm. And when I say that young, I'm referring to like 19 and, and 20 year old. But again, I just feel like you wouldn't have a whole lot to talk about. But I don't think a FEMA files are interesting and in, interested in talking. So I don't think you're supposed to talk to women that much anyway. You know what I'm saying? You no, know I'm saying you no, know I'm saying no, I don't, Jim, because I'm not a misogynist. <laughs> I'm sorry that you're problematic. Well, I had to throw something in there because we were we were bashing misogyny in one episode. I think it's time for a little <laughs> counterbalance to misogyny. To counterbalance, because like me and MK Lords were talking about how women are equal, so now I have to have Seamus on to talk about how women aren't equal. <laughs> we need to balance well, it out. Because you literally hate women. We've been over this. Because I hate women. I love that you've just defamed me across the internet <laughs> as some he man woman hater. Who doesn't think women should be able to vote? Granted, it's all right. So do I not think women should be able to vote? That's besides the point, but I don't lead with that. <laughs> I don't lead with that. I don't think women I don't should think vote. Anyone sh yeah, but I don't think, I don't think I don't anyone think should, should vote. vote I don't think anyone should vote, but I, <laughs> it depends on who I'm talking to. I think I we should allow I think we should me. allow people eight, 65 years and older to vote just to make them think that they're important. Like, oh, you still vote? Oh, cute. Oh, okay, back to the I just I feel on. like I feel like MK Lords is gonna just find me and beat me up. Yep. No, she's uh, gonna I'll beat her, you I'll, up, dude. I'll tell you where you she, where you live too. So, dude, she no, she couldn't though because I've been beating people up for thirty four years, and if she thinks she's better at beating people up than me, I've taken philosophy classes. Uh -oh. I have. I bet I could do better burps than you. Not when I'm drinking soda. But go ahead. All right, hold on. <laughs> give me. Give me. Talk for a second, and I'm just gonna let one rip. Okay. All right. So, Audience, so about beating treat. beating the crap out of women. Should we talk about Talon Fox? I definitely <laughs> that was horrible. I'm sorry. That was a horrible. <laughs> that, that was, I thought it was gonna be louder than that. That was a Rick burp. That was definitely a Rick and Morty burp. All right, Morty. Oh, uh, Morty. We gotta. Uh, get, I don't know, Rick. Ah, uh, Morty. Uh, uh. Michael is going to be like, don't come on my podcast. Don't come on my radio show with the same mic you burped into. <laughs> you sick, sick young man. Um, Let's talk no, about Fallon Fox. So what, oh, because you should. You, because I was listening what? to MK's podcast, Icono Sass. It's on SoundCloud. Google it. Icono Sass. Not Icono Class. Icono Sass? Yeah, Icono Sass. She's sassy. Because um, she's sassy. Icono <laughs> Sass. I'm looking it up. I probably but, spelled it wrong though. But there was one thing that she said where it was like, you know, like, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with the whole Talon Fox thing, and I'm like, 
<laughs> and it's not, and it doesn't come from a paternal thing. It's not like, oh, I care about these women because I'm a male figure and I should care about women and we should never hit women. Wait, what was she saying? What was her argument? There's so, nothing wrong with what? Okay, so let, you me, know tell, who Talon let me tell Fox her is. why there is something wrong with it. Okay, so Talon Fox, for those of you who don't know, is an MMA fighter. Uh, she was born a man. And then, oh, that that boy that just goes beating up girls, but it's okay because he's dressed as a girl. Yeah, no, it was, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more than that. Like he spent. It was more than that, you PC Nazi. He spent telling over, me it's more than that. Well, he he spent thirty years of his life as a man, not taking hormones, so he he's been under the 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 influence, like, let's say, of testosterone, like large doses of testosterone, like any other male would. Um, yeah, of course. And what we do, you know. It's what we do. Yeah, we just, the, it's what we do. Yeah, I mean, like there, there's a case to be made that like if someone makes that transition like earlier on, like early in puberty, which is kind of like a whole ethical debate about whether or not you should do that before they're 18, whatever. Um, <clears throat> that if they end up fighting people of the gender they transition to, there's no problem. But a lot of these kind of Maybe. studies are kind of like biased, like they don't use a large enough sample size. Um, there's a lot of lot of problems with them and they're not really well, well accepted in the science community. But I think the big thing with this is not that, you know, like if women agree they should to, to define a trans man, they should be allowed to. It's the fact that a lot of them didn't even know, like they were not upfront about the fact that she's a trans woman and she just, they just brought him in like, Oh, okay. This, this woman clearly works out. Like, no, it's, you know, he's been an MMA Dude. fighter for a long, long time and was been trained as a man and has been, you know, I under, just under, realized yeah. something, bro. Maybe <laughs> Chris Cantwell is transitioning to a woman, and that's why he thinks it's okay to hit ladies. Yeah. You ever stop and consider that? That's so bizarre. So MK Lords is cool. Yeah, with like that. Going I'm back to that, beating uh, on women. <laughs> but going back to beating on women, I disagree. Yeah. I disagree. And if you ever so, watch these fights that she's in, you would you would see like, oh wow. Who MK? Is, no, I mean no. The uh, the fight. I know. I was kidding. Fox. I was kidding. No, I'm, it was I'm a pretty joke. sure MK could throw down. <laughs> no, I don't doubt it. Could. You know. Yeah. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. But, but if you, you ever watch Talon this? Talon Fox fight some of these women, it it seems like the best way to describe it. I think Joe Rogan hit it on the head. Like it looks like a domestic abuse like footage of a guy just oh, beating that's the so sad. crap out of a woman, and it's not even fair. Well, and they don't even know. Honestly, a lot of the cases, they don't even know that that her history at all they don't i think that it's kind of sad no it's, it's fraud sad because i think we're moving oh it's absolutely fraud and we're, i think we're moving towards a place where they're going to want to totally disband gender segregation if that's even the proper way of putting it disband i don't know if that yeah word works in that context but they just want to do away entirely with the idea of gender segregated sports or anything by I the think, way, I still think that's ridiculous. You you said you watch Crowder. <laughs> did you see that video where Stephen Crowder, where uh, Stephen not Crowder. not gay Jared, did an arm wrestle with uh, one of the other writers he has, like the the female. Oh writer. yeah, he just smashed her immediately. Yeah, I mean, like this this man. girl like trains all the time. She's like super into CrossFit. She's always like, and lifting. he's just like a nerd. He's like a, he's like a he's nerd. Like, he was like, like, I don't I don't even remember the last time that I worked out. He's like this little scrawny kid, scrawnier than you. And that's saying a lot. I know. If you can believe it, and he just if was you like, can totally. believe it. <laughs> it was, it was sad. He just grabbed her, and, went, and he grabbed her by the neck and just slammed her head to the table and said, "Listen here, yeah, I just think you can <laughs> say, Listen, I'm, I'm a trans woman. I am transitioning, <laughs> and I will just mess you up. You know what else I found? No, but the, but so the we, funny thing was, like her <laughs> arm, her arm was like three times the size of his head. <laughs> like, I know. Like, and he's still just, I know, yeah. there's something magical about us men, there's, you know, there's, there's just something. Something to we, men having like, higher bone density and higher, or uh, even muscle density. Like, there's the whole kind of image of women beating the crap out of guys in movies where they kick someone and the guy flies across the room. No. That no. But, and you These know what else, dude? Beat, is the, it, this is sad. You know what I just came to, to the realization of? That you hate it's, women? It's 20, it's, yes. Well, no, I already knew that. It's hmm. 2017. And we are sitting here finding ourselves having to explain the differences between boys and girls to <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah. Is that not a little depressing? Yep. Yeah, it's a little people depressing. People actually have trouble with this. Now, you and I have had discussions about a really phenomenal writer by the name of John Pavlovitz, if I'm pronouncing that properly. <laughs> oh, oh, 
And I, I haven't got a, a chance to read this yet, but I, I'm, I, I want to hear your, your input on this because he says oh. the things that need to be said and uh, you should, John you should Pavlovitz, and that's, it's, it's, it's not only, so here's the crazy thing. He says stuff that needs to be said, and that's his tagline on his uh, WordPress website. Or I believe this is a Squarespace template, actually, but I could be wrong. Let me go to the bottom, actually, and I can confirm whether or not this is WordPress. You know, I actually have no idea. Here's the point, though. Here's what I'm trying to get across, Jim. John Pavlovich says the stuff that needs to be said, and that's his tagline. Now, this is not, this is not a quote from some critic who said that about him. This is... He feels that he's saying stuff that needs to be said, and he felt the need to say that about himself. So this is the kind of fellow we're dealing with. And I read an article of his in the past, and I did a deconstruction of it for your YouTube channel. And here's the thing about John. John is a Christian, but he's one of the good ones, Jim. <clears throat> he's one of the good Christians who will allow every left-leaning person within a 30-mile radius he would let them know that he agrees with them on most things he's not one of those backwards regressive american taliban christians um as we've been called who was it that used that phrase by the way i can't remember somebody said that uh somebody by and i'm actually not an evangelical you but somebody said he to throw you off into a tangent that's funny now you do no, i know now i'm just going off of a tangent <laughs> I you just you re- you've, you've rewired me um <laughs> and so he posted an article about the naked hypocrisy of the Christian Disney boycott. Now, I haven't even read this article, but I can already guarantee after the Tony took in the last article and how totally typical it was of this kind of literature that in this article, all he's going to do is he's going to either say there are other problems in the world. Why aren't Christians focusing on those or Christians aren't supposed to be mean, you know. I promise. I promise those are going to be his criticisms. I might be wrong, actually, but this is what I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, Let me read it. Conservative Christians have crawled out of the church pew woodwork to rend their garments and beat their breasts at word that Disney's live-action adaptation of Beauty and the Beast will feature an openly gay character. (gasps) They've loudly promised to boycott the film and Disney itself in spiritual protest. And so, again... Here's what bothers me. I don't care that much about the Disney thing. I don't. It's not that huge a deal to me, but it's a big deal to him. But it's a big deal to him because I think it's you're a big too fond of Milo. I think that's what it is. You're. I just. I love Milo. You got, and I'm a, you got a little bit too fond of Milo. Now you're. Mm, I probably. I, I want to. Oh! Ah! I, I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, he brings up Trump in this article, too. In the last article, he brought up Trump and how bad he is. And, of course, he couldn't get through three paragraphs without mentioning Trump. In the third paragraph, it says, But right now, their sanctimonious diatribes and their public castigation ring more hollow than usual because to offer things, well, because to offer these things, they've had to take a break from the work of breathlessly and violently, violently, defending the three-time married, adultering, vile, misogynistic professed p word grabber that many of them voted into the office see i already P-word? told you yeah he wrote but he put a little asterisk he wrote p asterisk and then spelled the rest of the word out why i wonder what word he was i st- i'm not sure i the reason i said p word is because i actually don't know what word he was trying to say because he has that asterisk in oh, there oh, totally I, I think it yeah. may be the same word that they were openly using all over the place while they were wearing those little pink meg hats yeah. Yo, so yeah, no. Okay. I still I don't remember the word, but I know what you're talking about. It's weird how it's different in certain oh, contexts. What are you gonna do? Hi kitty. Good pussy. Oh, anyways, my what? Um all right, so let me let me let me let me go. It turns out that where the rubber meets the road, biblical moralities. Oh yes! I okay, I found it. I knew it, Jim. I I called it. I knew he was gonna go into this. It turns out that when the rubber meets the road or the campaign trail, quote, biblical morality, unquote, is far less of a concern when it's the guy who claims he's against abortion, the one who promises you a Supreme Court seat, the one who can keep your state rod. Then the selectively parsed out words of scripture become far less pressing, the life of Jesus much less critical, and a stranger's sexual activity no longer priority. In that case, they can in one breath lament the corruptible influence of LGBTQ people simply to live quiet, undisturbed lives. And in the next breath, they can pledge allegiance to a foul-mouthed predator who's violently treated woman is utilitarian sex objects. Now, he's not wrong in some of his criticisms of Trump. Of course, it's just over-the-top virtue signaling. But 
but not entirely wrong. However, he mentioned that the LGBTQ community is simply asking to live in quiet nonsense, untrue. They're actually interested in suing people out of business for saying things that offend them or refusing to participate in their matrimonial ceremonies. Yep. Their marriage ceremonies. How dare you not bring flowers to my wedding? How dare you recommend to me 10 other florists who can provide me with bouquets for my wedding? I want you to do it. I'm going to sue you unless you do that. They're not interested in living their own life. Really? Now, many LGBTQ people Hold actually we, are. We need to be, but we need to be clear. He's talking about, we need to be clear on one thing. It's not okay for a Christian baker to not cater a a party for gay for, uh, 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 a marriage for gay couples. That's no, but if and but if it, uh, someone from Islam, uh, a Muslim doesn't want to, that's okay because that's that's, fine. that's their religious belief and they need to be respected. We have go ahead. We have to respect it. We have, we to, have respect to respect it. it exactly. And so I called it. I totally called it without even reading the article. I already knew that John Pavlovitz was going to say what needs to be said, and that was that <laughs> yeah. Christians Christians are mad about A, but did you know that B is happening? Oh, got him. Drop the mic. Boom. Ah, got us. Got dude. him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Something came in the mouth. I will today. say, I will say I do think this is a little bit overblown that they're all they're all freaking out about a gay character, but they're totally okay with a woman dating an animal. I'm just gonna throw that <laughs> out true. there. Bestiality. Yeah, bestiality. Hey, but she trans- <laughs> That's because she transforms him with the power of love, Jim. You're sick. Okay. Uh, that whole film is about Stockholm Syndrome. I was never fond and of beauty. furries. <laughs> that's true. It's also about furries. Ooh, that's even... I didn't even think of it that way. You're right, though. Dude, you know there's like a furry club at my school? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's called Scad Furs. <laughs> Which, by the way, I saw there's... an interesting article today. I wish I could pull it up. But there was an article about the, the new movement of alt furries. <laughs> The alt right, alt, alt right, furries, right, alt right furries. They're alternative furries. Yeah, they believe that to be a. Do they believe that uh, the culture of furryism <laughs> requires that you have a certain <laughs> skin color or genetic? These degenerates are ruining my culture. Be right back, yiffing. <laughs> uh, that's, that's so. It, it's gross, but it's true. You yeah. know what else I noticed? I think I find that more and more. Us libertarians are being lumped in with white nationalists, white supremacists, and any other group that the media is presently spending most of their time and energy demonizing. And of course, there's good reason to demonize actual white supremacists. But yeah. we're told that libertarians and the alt right are in some sort of alliance. Dude, ask anyone on the alt right what they think of libertarians. Oh yeah, I promise you, we're not in an alliance. No, I mean like they're even turning on Cantwell, who's Cantwell's part of that kind of umbrella uh, <laughs> but they're even turning on i know him. i was i was actually accused i was accused of i think at one point it wasn't even like meant as an accusatory statement but someone was just like mentioned in passing a very left-leaning libertarian that like oh you know most of your work is more like you know like let's make fun of libertarians alt right he's like he's like a lot of it's libertarian and alt right i was like alt right i was like just because i was like i don't think you know what alt right means just because you criticize islam or you don't agree with left-leaning social policies, or you think Hillary Clinton is terrible. It doesn't make you alt-right. I, I, people don't know what that word means. Yeah, I, I've been talk- we've been talking about the alt. Matt Pritchard, who I need to get back on the show, get for, get your shit together, get back on the show. Anyways, um, he um. He and I were like always talking about this stuff long before anybody else was, before there was even the alt right name, before even they started, because call- originally they started calling themselves neo reactionaries. That was the term for it at the time. But even 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 before then, we were talking about like, oh wow, we don't like the way this is going because we were all subscribed to a, a YouTuber named Fringe Elements, and Fringe Elements was really going hard in the paint for this stuff, this kind of race realism stuff. And it was, and we were just going like this. I don't like the way libertarianism is starting to head. If if this is what we're talking about now, and it just kept going that way and going that way, and yeah. So I don't know. We I've been like I've been criticizing them for a long time. I I think I'm well familiar with what they're what they're advocating, the, the stuff that they're pushing, and that we're not agreeing with it. And and now all of a sudden, like it's this is something they're 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 being thrown in the mainstream. And I don't think that they're. They're still mar- they're still a marginal group. There's not really many people who accurately identify themselves as the alt right, 
But the reason why they get brought up in the mainstream is because they're the left's whipping boy. That's that's why they've been given a platform yes. is so that the left can go like, oh, see these alt right people. Well, that's all of <laughs> that's all the uh, right wing. That's now. everyone yeah. we disagree with. Yep. <gasps> what are you gonna do? Yes. People are just horrible, Jim. Yep. So people are just the worst. Just the worst. Yeah. Just so bad. So naughty. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, Jim, I, I I got I got some stuff I have to do, but it was really horrible being on your podcast once <laughs> again. Know, it was really I bad know. doing it. I, I try to I make want it you worse. To know. I try to make it as I know as uncomfortable as possible. Evidently, it's the you derail me. This was probably it was probably most uncomfortable for the audience. Uh-huh. The poor people. Yep. I just I got on here. I was angry, I was obnoxious, I was hyper, and I was derailed quite frequently. Yep. And I think that, I think I need to debate somebody, Jim. This time I'm on here, I want to debate someone. Okay, uh, you can debate me real quick. Uh, I think All right. I think Christianity is dumb. Fight me. Well, okay, well, I've been Christian for 34 years, so I, I don't think... Yeah, but you're a really... fucking white male! You're a fucking you're fucking a white male. Okay, I that's won. fair. And I, I think won. You've, I've got to be honest. I got to be honest. Yep. I've never. I don't think I've ever lost a debate. But I think maybe. <sighs> yep, 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 yep. That was uh, job well you done. You may have won this debate, Jim. <laughs> you may have won this debate. Next time, I'm gonna debate. What was I'm curious, by the way? What was Mick Lords saying about? Um the whole Milo thing that I was coming here to balance out. Oh, was, you should probably listen to the episode. <laughs> uh, Jim, here's the thing. That's a lot of work. And then I'd have to hear your voice more often than I am now. Yep. Uh, ah, fine. I'll listen to it. Listen to I'll your listen own listen podcast. It. Damn it. <laughs> fine. All right, Listen man. Your heart, Thanks for being on. You can find. You can Thanks find, for having me, man. Is, is your is your domain back up? Freedomtunes.com? Is that still a thing? Did no, you get that? it got stolen. No, it's not up yet. We're still working on it. Okay. We have a lot of work to do, you know, Jim. If you Google you know, Freedom Tunes, you'll find it on YouTube. You'll find. If you go to <laughs> HTTP colon forward slash. Forward slash www dot google dot com slash <laughs> slash slash freedom that last slash freedom. is optional <laughs> and freedom type in f r e e d o m t o o n s one word it's camel case freedom tunes. And hit the little, the little uh, 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 magnifying glass icon, and you'll find it. It's right there. Just go to w h t t p call slash slash a o l keyword a word keyword youtube dot youtube com slash fred youtube dot com slash freedom tunes, and it's everyone keeps making this mistake. Everyone keeps saying Freedom Tunes as in, like, musical tunes. No, it's Freedom Tunes as in cartoons. Yeah. It's Freedom T- Tunes O-O-N-S, as in cartoons. And also, T-U-N-S. you can't... You, yes. You, uh, you also... You just have to Google it be- because... Spell. You gotta Google it because my channel name is... Uh, you, you just... The, the channel URL is actually YouTube.com slash Cartanimation, um, but the channel is called Freedom Tunes because the Freedom Tunes, if you actually go to YouTube.com slash Freedom Tunes, it is a girl. Uh, it is just a cat. It's a picture of a cat. I imagine it's a YouTube channel that some woman made. <laughs> Women ruin everything. There, That's there's your I counterbalance. <laughs> That's how we balanced it out. That's how we balance it out. Got to get, got to get rid of them ladies. I don't know why it's still legal for them to podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here's another thing from my list. My required misogyny. Uh, okay, I don't hate women. I think every man should own one. Oh, you know, you said that before and it offended me just as much last time. So, <laughs> oh, let, let me read the next one since I've already been on that one. Uh, I don't hate women. There's nothing more I'd rather have sex with. That's disgusting. I'm All leaving. Right. I hate you. Right. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> Never worms. doing this podcast. You know what? Again. I'm going to say worms and I don't care. I don't care. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to own it. Worms.
Worms. No! Yes. This is not... No! Worms. No! No! Not, this is not Freedom Fiends. We don't nope. say worms. Nope. Nope. I hate you. I'm cutting you off. The end. Bye. Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the BIPCOT NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. Them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at Lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason, in, in this country, and in most of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.